Okay, um, I think everybody's ready. Uh, if you're comfortable, or even if you're not comfortable, I think we're going to kick off. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody on behalf of Pontoni Gallery and the directors of the Pontoni Gallery um, to this fantastic exhibition, and to Timothy Spall, who needs no introduction really. Sometimes. Um, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I'm Tim Wright. I, I've worked with Tim in the past. Um, and we're going to have a bit of a chat about what he's been doing, what you're seeing here, how this all came about. So after about 45 minutes, we will open up for questions from, from everybody. So. Or sooner. If, or or sooner, it depends how it goes. Yeah, if it's yeah. really terrible, we run out. We might as well start. Might need quickly. some help. <laughs> uh, there's one question that you can't ask, which is what is his favourite colour? <laughs> <laughs> it does happen sometimes, but I think we, we have an embargo on that one. Mm. If anybody wants to know, it's just blue on this 1965 Butlins Clacton badge. <laughs> <laughs> So that's because uh, I know that because I was there. That, that's where I got it. <laughs> so what I what we thought we'd talk about uh, is particularly this exhibition, and particularly Tim's experience of painting, and which is uh, relatively new to. Um, I mean, you're obviously all aware of what he's been doing in the past, and his, uh, his you know illustrious career in film. Um, but this new departure um, is full of quite interesting subjects and obviously interesting paintings. Um, and I wanted to start off really by talking about how does this story begin? Where, you know, where does this come from? Uh, what happened to make you do this? And uh, were there things that in your background that led you here? Um, mm. I mean, I, you know, we're, we know you started acting very early on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And school was kind of, there were three things at school that we talked about, which mm. were, the, you know, it was art, army, or acting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. art is a kind of latent thing that's been lurking there in the background, I suspect. Um, yeah. So what, what was it that you think gave a sort of spark well, I mean, Tim uh, very humbly said we work together. Um, uh, in fact, he is the person who is uh, s uh, responsible for starting me off, really, because um, about five, three years, four, maybe four years, even before we started rehearsing, uh, even started rehearsing, Mike Lee's Mr. Turner, which became Mr. Turner, which was known as untitled 2012-13 for a long time. Um, yeah. I didn't even know who, who I was supposed to be teaching no, to begin with. No, no. A well, complete mystery. Absolutely. And I then, think it could have been Jude Law. Well, you never know. Yeah. Was, I, I was a proper actor. Uh, yeah, well, but, no. Um, I mean, I'm really <laughs> delighted it was you. Oh, all right. <laughs> but, I, um, no, no Tim, well, Mike said, if you're going to play one of our great painters, you better learn how to hold a brush. Um, <laughs> He also knew I had a bit of a feeling, you know, uh, for art. And they, so he, he tracked down through various people, I think it's through, through his costumes, through the um, through uh, production. Yeah. Alice yeah. and Chitty yeah. tracked him down and hooked us up together. This is two years before we even started rehearsing um, Mike Lee's, which became Mr. Turner. And for those who don't know, all Mike's work is. Uh, the end product is evolved through improvisations and through the discovery and research that ends up becoming the final product. Uh, and so Tim and I were introduced and Tim set out to give me this, basically a crash course, old fashioned in a sense, yeah. foundation course that you would have had in, you know, I don't know if they still do it, in old art, in art school. I don't know, but I mean, All yes. the mediums, all the different things we could do and then we looked at 
in the process. We looked at Turner's <coughs> and we talked about that. But on the whole, he gave me this crash course, didn't you? Uh, yeah. And uh, Well, we started with drawing, just very basic things, mm. all the things you'd need to know, and all the things, of course, that Turner would have had to know himself. Yeah. And um, I tried to tailor things so that you would have kind of introduced things, uh, experienced things that rather like he may have done. So you're going from drawing to watercolour to mm. oil paint. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. And I'd never done any of this. I'd never done any life drawing. I'd never done any model drawing. I'd never done... I'd only ever really pissed about with a biro and a, maybe a pencil messed about and drew mad pictures. I'd never really done anything with any discipline whatsoever. Which, that uh, was really useful. The well, fact that you'd not done anything. And so you didn't have any preconceptions. No, indeed. And when I was at school... Uh, and I found myself in this dilemma. Do I? This is literally true. It sounds like a joke or something out of some uh, sitcom that nobody would watch um, uh, or not believe. I mean, I found myself in this dilemma. I was in the day. There were the first people that introduced themselves to me as human beings, other than teachers, and I was allowed to call them their, by their first names. Were art teachers, and so I got started to get to know them. Uh, and but then. One of them was an ex-Leeds Art College student. And uh, Leeds was very famous. I think, I think it's where Brian Eno met, uh, it, met uh, been, Brian Ferry, I think it was. I think Brian Ferry was at Newcastle. I'm not sure. Well, I think, they, I think there's somehow, but there was a yeah. whole... And there was this whole movement. And I, we, we went to this um, art, uh, the postgraduate, I think it was, uh, show of Leeds Art College 1975 and it blew me away I saw this aquarium uh, and it had four sets of dentures in it real dentures <laughs> and it was full of blue bottles <laughs> and I thought this is it this is this I, I'm, 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 I'm a Dadaist I'm a Dadaist this is what I'm gonna be and uh, at the same time as I was a data Dadaist and then finding out and I also lived near uh, Battersea, which is, the, you know, as we all know, the poor side of the River Thames, as far as Chelsea's concerned. But you know, up the road was Not the anymore. Tate, so I started to go and look in the Tate. But at the same time, so I was looking at stuff in there, and I became obsessed with Dali's um, lobster telephone. So, and then I started doing mad things myself. I, I asked my mate, I put an envelope, I asked for some pubic hair, and I, <laughs> and I put some pubic hair on an apple and nailed it up, and then... But at the same time I was doing all this, kind of thinking about, you know, this surrealist Dadaist, I was also in the evening, I was, I was an army cadet. I was learning how to strip down Bren guns <laughs> at Clapham Junction. The, uh, the army cadets affiliated to the 3rd Royal Tank Regiment. So I had this ambition to be a tank driver. Uh, so, so it was this unusual fit, tank driving Dadaist, you know. But, uh, <laughs> But then I did the school play, and as we know, the rest is geography, history, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, but, so I had this thing, and this thing of this understanding, and I'd started looking at artists then, yeah. impressionists, so I had this awareness, and that's when I saw my first tor Turner in the tape. That um, long, so you, yeah. you registered Turner yeah, at that I, time? Yeah, I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd had this thing, and then, of course, that all got... The soldier was taken care of in... Because really, I like being a soldier because I like dressing up. You know, I didn't, certainly didn't want to kill anybody, and I, I'd have been a terrible tank driver, and I've got claustrophobia anyway, so, um, so that wouldn't have worked. Um, so the play that my drama teacher said to me, um, I've never said to any of these pupils before. I just played the line in The Wizard of Oz, uh, and she was taking my nose off, and she said, I've never said this because it's a horrible business, but I think you should be an actor. So I'll show you the route. She said, I think you should go to college and then get your own levels. So I, I just blew all them. I didn't really care. I, didn't, I, I, did eight, I was doing art A-level. I took art A-level yeah. and got grade A. Because uh, I did a model of my... Um, it wasn't a painting, was it, though. Was there pubic hair involved? It, what, no, but what it was... <laughs> no, it was weirder than that. It was called <laughs> My Mum in Hospital. My Mum's quite a theme. Yeah. It was a three-drawer three yeah. uh, chest of drawers. And I got a, a, a mannequin with a model, uh, and I dressed it up as a nurse, and I had a drip feed next to her, going into the top drawer, and in the top drawer, I tipped the, in, the uh, contents of a steak and kidney pie. 
<laughs> and I put it in there, and I said, that is my mum in hospital. <laughs> And you've got, got a great day. <laughs> that, that's the 70s for you, isn't that's it? That's the 70s for you. great. So if I'd gone to art college then, I certainly wouldn't have done painting. You know. No. You know, it's, no, you um, wouldn't have done. Uh, mm. You know, of course, it would actually, unless you went to certain art colleges, it would be quite difficult to actually do painting at art college. Then, yeah. You know, it was something that was rather frowned upon. Yeah, it was. Um, I think unless it you wasn't. went to somewhere like Norwich yeah. or Camberwell, it was it was on its way out you know that was that was the past you know yeah yeah um so this was a real revelation when i worked with tim it was really like starting from ground zero apart from having a you know certain people i liked you know like max ernst and people like that yeah. and, you know and other artists i was you know i had this and i that grew that love of art you know uh, as i got older um, so painting sort of has a bit of a hold over you Mm. I mean, we, we end up, you've, we go through the Turner thing, then you do Lowry. Yeah. And it seems that actually Lowry is the catalyst for you actually painting independently on your own. It is. And, and, and that's where this stuff <coughs> gestates, if you like. Yeah, yeah. it is. Art, in fact, apart from that, I just wanted to give Tim more credit because one of the things he taught me was, which is a revelation to me, is he taught me this, did this session of speed drawing and speed painting. This is a thing that completely revolutionised me because what he did, he got me to paint 20 pictures in 10 minutes. Yeah. With ink. And you just... It was supposed to be with a model. In, yeah. ten, in five minutes. But was it? Yeah. Was it? Fine. I can't remember. No, Whatever it was, it was quick. <laughs> yeah. And he'd just say, go, stop, pick up another one. And then you put them all out and you think that's just going to be a pile of shit, you know. Some of them were. <laughs> but a lot of them, if not all of them, had this shape in them, had this... There was an image of the model. There was, some, there was movement in it. And I thought, blimey, this is about... If you have a... Maybe if you have a latent talent, it's about unlocking it mm. and just the process of doing it. And that's what he taught me. That's why I will always be grateful. Well, that, you know, that expressive... Thing came out, didn't it? Because yeah. of the discipline of the of the studio, if you like, yes. and the structure of the studio, it, it actually was allowed to come out. You know. Yeah, uh, and then of course, then concentrating and honing in not only on Turner's style, but his psychology and thinking about his psychology f as much as his work and what might, what is the tapestry of someone's entire bot mind and body going on in there in relation to their work or in or in opposed to their work. Mm. But I think that comes, came later on. I think that mm. comes down on top of that framework that you had of, of, of getting to understand how you put painting together. Well, we ended up, didn't yeah. we? we? I ended up doing a, a that size a re reproduction of uh, Steamboat of a Harbour's yeah. Mouth. I mean, I've got it on my wall and I still look at it and I can't even remember doing it. You know, because it's, it's, you know... But that was, no, yeah. I, that, was, that was where you really had to study yeah. Turner, break it down into its component parts and, and, and try and make your version, which was a very yeah. accomplished version. The problem was, when I did continue painting after that, I was just knocking off these quasi-shitty copies of Turner. So right. I stopped it. Then five years later, yeah. I ended up playing Lowry. So there's something that happens when you're doing Lowry, mm. um, and might be just circumstantial, it might be because you're in the hotel room on your own, I don't know, mm. but then you start painting your paintings. So well, they're not pastiches, no. they're not copies, it's something of yours. Exactly. So the easy images start appearing. Yeah, that happened during, because I started looking at Lowry and then I didn't take any more tuition, but I constantly, I painted from morning to night in between shots, I did lots of takes on Lowry, lots of stuff. Then I started drawing and painting little pictures for some of the crew as thank yous. And I started looking at this and this style started appearing, which was neither, was nobody, but seemingly uh, something that was just coming from me. Well, I stopped because then I left it for a pause. And then about three or four months later, I thought I, started, I had a compulsion. Yeah. To paint again, I thought, oh, I'll do. I'll get some canvases. Never painted on canvas before. 
And well, I'd get had. Crit- oh, with you, yeah. but, but only as an exercise, yeah. as it yeah. were. And as yeah, a, yeah. I'd never done it under my own, never been to a shop and bought one. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I'm now going to paint a picture on canvas. So I then, then I thought, I'll try acrylics. I always thought it was a bit declassé, acrylics. I don't know why, but I used it and I started using it and it makes you paint fast because it dries so quick. Yeah. Yeah. And I got out and it suited me. And all of a sudden, these things started to appear that were neither Turner, nor Lowry, nor anybody else. And I looked at it and I thought, well, that must be Timothy Spall painting that. That must be me. Nobody else, it's not. And, I, and also, I'd had the genius of Turner and the different genius of Lowry sitting on my back. But when I started to do that, it's almost like that dissolved. It was like I was no longer scared of it. Yeah. I knew it was neither of them. I wasn't certainly denying it or running away from it, but they were no longer saying, you worm, you know, um, you're, you, what are you doing? I just started to paint without thinking about it. You know? So, uh, and, and so at this point, what is it you're painting? You know, there's this famous Francis Bacon quote, it's that it's not how you paint, it's what you're painting is important. What, what's your subject? That's well, the, yeah. the, you know, what, what's important about this stuff? So what is it you're picking up on? What's, well, I know, think what's it's, significant? I don't know whether it's because of being in f- a lot of films. I mean, I've been an actor since I was 21 and I've done like more than 60 movies and a lot of telly. Um, but I've always had a f- very visual, I've always been struck by a, th- a thing, you know, like a, a framed thing. I've always had a feeling for, and I've carried um, ever since the iPhone. Uh, I carried it and I've got 15,000 photographs in here. Some of them, are, most of them are just rubbish, but a lot of them are things that capture my imagination just there and then. It's either juxtapositioning or something that's allied with my mood yeah. or something that's absolutely against it or something that has both in it. That is a mixture that I can't explain that is, that is somehow... Um, telling me that it has a relevance. Yeah. So but it's it, something I can't express at the time, but I know it's something I have to capture there and then. Uh, I have to go, what? yeah, I've got to get that. And there it is. You so know. It is, this is often landscape. Yeah, it's more, a landscape yeah, motif, More often than it? not, yeah, yeah. Or a sky or the sea. I mean, there's, you know, we can see from the paintings this, this theme is very strong. Yeah. And, and also, there's quite a lot of framing going, going on. Mm. You know, I think it's, it is, you know, it's, it's, there is something stagey about what you're doing. So there's sort of filmic aspects. So it's like a, it's a, it's a still yeah. out of a, a continuum, if you like. So I was imagining that is this something to do with you, you on your boat? Where I you're think going it's past something yeah, yeah. and you're seeing it from a distance because you've got... You know, this is all from a distance. Is all pretty much all of these paintings are have got a critical <laughs> distance, haven't they? So I, I'm imagining you're seeing something as you as you're passing. So you you you're away from your subject. Yeah, I mean, and then you grabbing it. Yeah, absolutely. And also, a lot of these are done um, when I've been at sea and been on a journey, and I've been actually. I mean, I don't know why I go on the sea a lot because it frightens me to death. Um, Maybe that's why. Yeah, I think it is. It's, I'm, I've always said I'm 51, 13, 49% in love with the sea, 51% terrified <laughs> of it. So a lot of these are actually, that's, I think that's the only one when I'm in motion. And that was when I was really scared because uh, that, the sea was going to, that's on the Baltic and the sea was kicking up. And I thought, God, and I was going to, the, to Malmo and I've got no idea. Uh, I hadn't told him I was coming. I'd never been there before. And this guy, and this, anyway, we'll talk about it another time, but, so a lot of these are, are moments of tranquility or peace after being scared or when you've arrived somewhere. And some of them are representative of the picture and what I do after the thing, or in the harbour, or occasionally at sea, mm. but they are, they start out as a model. I never set out to go, I must reproduce this. So yeah. they're, they're kind of amalgams of views, aren't they? So mm. you've, got a, you've got a sky, or you've got a sea, you've got a, 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 an architectural feature, or you've got a tree, or your blasted mm. tree, you know, or your, your sunset. Yeah. Uh, and you put these 
you're putting them together. They're a composite image rather than just a view. It's not like you see, oh, that's a nice view. No, it's, it. it's never that. It's always, what is that? You know, yeah. what, it's like, I've got to get, if it's, it's gorgeous, you take it, and then you look at it again, you think, well, that's just gorgeous, doesn't yeah. it? You know, several, when I was going back to choose what I wanted to choose, I, none of them were just because I thought it was pretty. Yeah. All of them are a mixture of something either banal and mundane or material, uh, in conjunction with something that's spiritual in a sense, something that is, you know, to me the sky and the sea is about as near as the spiritual in the material you can get. And I think everybody, however sophisticated, however dim, however clever, however uh, self-congratulatory um, you are about your uh, edification or your, your, your academic achievements or your genius of perception, everybody shares a love for a sunrise and a sunset. Mm. And that's not just because, ah, oh, what does it look like? People don't go, oh, what does that look like? Is it, it looks like an orange. No, <laughs> no, it looks like the sea and the sky and nobody can say it looks like anything else. They might say it looks like a photograph. But I think to me, that is people going, I recognise something that I don't know or is indefinable in me which is basically my soul and my spirit, yeah. which I think is, I mean, I, when I want I, so them all together, this dark foreground, there's a lot of that, where there's a reaching out towards well, something yeah. that is mysterious and strange and unanswerable yeah. and unquestionable and comforting and terrifying. Well, but, you, I was going to mention, you, mm. you have a lot of silhouette going on and you have a lot of dark foregrounds from which you, you are looking out at. Yeah. You know, so it's like you kind of, there's quite a lot of sort of lowering, foreboding atmosphere in these paintings. You know, they're, yeah. they're quite, there's a storm coming on. There's or a lot the of the storm's that. just gone. Yeah, you yeah, know, or, yeah, yeah. You know, so they're, they're, they're quite, um, they're not simply scenes. You no, know, they're not. Which is they're, what I mean. They are a bit filmic. They're no, sto another story. Yeah, they are. They, they, they are. I mean, really. I, I when when I was um, working with you, I discovered that, of course, that paintings was film. You know, painting is film. It was the original film. If there yeah. wasn't, wasn't painting, there wouldn't be film. It's a. It's the next step from painting, um, and I think paintings are film of the time. Um, well, and you know, yes. um, but say for instance, it, it, there's the picture, but there's the mood. It's almost the mood is as important as the framing, isn't it? You use the frame and the, maybe a classic or an unconventional group of things to try and what is that? Why am I? What am I digging out of that conglomeration yeah. to try and you know? I kept saying to myself, I'm new at this. I'm going to go with it. What I lack in technique, I'm going to trust grunt my way through to get a mood uh, and if I can get the mood capture which is the, you know what initially mystified me when I took the picture or felt it and I can dig it out during that and it's yeah. in there that's what is important to me well I'm going to put my uh, quote words with here right. um, poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and it takes its origin from recollection in tranquility so what I think is, I think is relevant to what you've been doing. Yeah. Uh, you see these pieces that are pulling a few memories together in, a, in the studio. They're not on plein air paintings, they're not paintings you do in front of the motif. They're paintings that you've, you, you pull them together, almost collage them. In yeah. the so you've got, you know, you've got your lowering sky, you've got your sunset, you've got your tree, or you've got your bit of architecture, and then you put those elements together in the space of the studio, in recollection of some powerful memory. I mean, is it, that Absolutely, correct? no, that is true. I mean, I, I, I never really uh, have done any on plein air. I've never really done that, gone out with an easel. I, I would be, feel very self-conscious yeah. and I would feel, I was just, I, I, it doesn't feel right to me. Also, it's important, apropos of this quote, that what you see, what you take at the time, is there and then. The rest is a dialogue between you and it. You're not looking at it and going, I must capture this. Yeah. It's capturing it then. And then 
with all of the different feelings of what you're going through, what it is, what it was, what, uh, what you're trying to dig out, not to represent it, but what it is when you and that blank canvas are in there and what comes out is very, I mean, I'll use an example, that, the darkest painting there, um, yeah. that's called The Dying of the Lake Light. That also could be called My Friend, The Comfortable Window Frame, <laughs> because that, I remember, that's, that's a view initially, it became, it's slightly different from one of the original painting, of a view out of a window across Lake Oldswater. And it's just at that time in the day, when you know you get that, I don't know if anybody else feels this, um, I was actually heading to a job that I wasn't sure about, and it's a beautiful place, place like Oldswater, and I looked out, and the sky was coming in, and the, di the day was dying, and I had this real sense of deep, deep melancholy, really deep melancholy, but at the same time, such a comfort. I was another title for it was going to be called Comfortable Melancholy, because I don't know if anybody ever has that feeling at the end of the day. You get this mixture where you are sad and the day is ending, there's a kind of death of something going on, but there's a kind of relish in it, a lovely, comfortable, a comfortableness in the sorrow in a bizarre way and that's what I was trying to catch in that and that's kind of what is a, a well, explainable, an yeah. explainable yeah. emotion there's different versions of that in all of these yeah. for other reasons you know? yeah well they're not what you'd call impressions they're expressions yeah so, you know you putting this emotional uh, uh, baggage into the images yeah and, yeah and, you know they are Expressions of mood and yeah, attitude. I mean this one, uh, that was this bizarre sky formation, this cloud and this thing going on in the Camargue. And at the same time, for an hour and a half, we were, my wife and I were walking up and down, talking to my daughter in um, uh, uh, Australia. Our our grand, our youngest yeah. granddaughter was very ill ill at the time in hospital. And we were scared, we were frightened, and that cloud, I kept looking at that it's a conversation back, we'd had about five or six conversations, and this beautiful thing was going on with this cloud at the same time. So that's representative of something that's, that's why it's a bit weird, I think, the cloud well, you're, you're, as a kind yeah. of... Well, you're darkness. seeing the landscape as an expression of your... Yeah, you of know, your mood and your what's mood going and on. It's either, yeah. And it's trying to threaten you, help you, or make you feel worse. Sometimes these things make you... It's like that one with the, the dog shit bin in the front of it, back there. That's called Heaven Beyond the Dog Shit Bin. Because I kept looking at, the, looking at the background, saying, oh, that's beautiful. What a beautiful picture. And there's a dog shit bin right there. And I thought, actually, my mood is much more akin to what's in that bin. I feel much more yeah. shitty than I do about the loveliness of that thing. That's why I kept the bin in the foreground very much as, as a feature in it, you know. Gets top bill in the ship bin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I did want to talk to you a bit about technique, because mm. this is all your, this is your material, this is your expression, this is the outcome. But, how, you know, what about in the studio? What are you doing? How, are you, how do you feel about technique? I mean, I know you did mention the three Ds, despondency, despair and depression that, yeah. go, that go hand in hand with working in the studio. Well, yeah, my one... I mean, which we're all familiar with. Well, my one regret, not regret, my one revelation um, about painting, and take it seriously, is that it's not very enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really quite horrible at times. Yeah. You know, if you get stuck... I, this is something I've never... I've experienced it with a part going on but I'd never experienced trying to dig out an image and then it going not working and then literally at some point being in tears and literally sometimes in the, in the fetal <laughs> position in my studio and then wandering around the streets and then, then getting a bit right and then being elated. Yeah. You See. know, I mean, that is, that is what I realised. I mean, I, I knew, I've always known you know, way, way back, that I can't do anything that's got the word art in it without something like a ponce, uh, without taking it seriously. I cannot do anything without taking it seriously. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a, if it's a creative expression. I can't do it. Um, oh, I have to yeah, take it Yeah, because, it, you know, it's, a, it's thorough going. I don't take myself it's seriously, but I take that No, but, I mean, it is thorough going, isn't yeah, it? This yeah. is something that was... To do 20 paintings 
in the time you yeah. had, which is what, a year? Well, it ended up being about seven months. Yeah, it's yeah, even yeah. less, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, And um, then I went back and messed about with a few of them for about three or you know, five months. So I, I can imagine that the process in the studio is quite um, hard. It's attritional. Because, yeah, you know, attritional. it's not like you do something and it's an outcome. You do ten things and it's not an outcome. You've got to do something else. It's yeah, yeah you know, and, and in order to knowing. get that thing in your head out there. Yeah, and it's not collaborative. I'm used to... No. Being, so you no. can't blame anybody. It's all, it's all down to you, isn't it? Yeah, you can't... Yes, there's no excuses. There's no displacement. Yeah. You cannot do displacement therapy when yeah. you're painting a picture. No. It's you and it. And I set out, also with this, uh, knowing that I was, a, you know, by nature, a Dadaist, that I, I wanted to teach myself about form when I did it. So I set out to do things that were, in a sense, however they are or not, classically framed. Yeah. yeah Images yeah. that are constructed and composed. I wanted to do that to show myself, to see whether I could do it, A, and B, in the process, if I consider myself to be an artist and, and a gallery owner and you have taught me and the gallery owner has given me the confidence, Dominic, to go for it, I'm going to have to, not only in the process of this, do it, but I want to teach myself yeah. and learn from this. Because well, I didn't know, I had no idea. When I came in and saw these paintings hang up, hanged the day before I opened, I thought, shit. I suppose I did though. I mean, I, that's not false humbleness. It was like a really strange feeling of going, God, oh, crikey. Because mm. after I finished every painting, I had no idea how I did it. When I started the next one, I had no idea how I was going to do it. Well, I, you know. I mean, I think you do. I think you do a bit because you can mix a colour up now. Well, I, well and you, that's, you know, you yeah. know how to put, put it on. I mean, that's, yeah. that's difficult stuff. Well, I mean, I learned you, you give me that but, a bit as well. But that, I think maybe that. Being surprised, well, you do that, you put that in, and looking at it, no, it's more like that, 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 it's more like that, and then bunging it up and then trying that, and then delicacy. Mm. Oh, I think, and then, you know, if you look at these paintings, the colour is, is very delicate and very subtle, actually. Whoa. Um, well, you know, and which is a great contrast to this way you're, you're using dark shadow, the yeah. you know, way you're using black silhouettes. You know, so there's, you know, there's quite a lot of subtle stuff going on in there, you know, and it's... Yeah, it's a struggle, but I think, you know, you kind of know where you are in this. Yeah, story, I mean, and also, I mean, I was reading a lot, and I've also sporadically been reading quite a lot of, in the last year or two, quite a lot of theology. You know, I've got very into some quite unusual Christian mystics, um, like, uh, Meister Eckhart and William Law and Jacob Bowman, who write, uh, I had no idea these guys existed, really. Um, and I um, read quite a lot of their stuff about this, what Huxley calls the unity of knowledge of the divine ground of all being, which sounds like a right mouthful coming from a pont. But it, uh, <laughs> if you analyse it, it means actually trying to experience, you know, the infinite yeah. through, not God obviously in Christianity, it being its thing, but it is that all the religions share exactly the same desire. All the main religions, this thing. and. I mean, I don't, I mean, one, you know, I'm not, I don't purport to be one thing or another, but I'm very interested in this reaching way, way, way beyond because I'm always interested. Mm. There's this, there's the shit bin, there's the darkness, there's the comfort, there's the bald trees, and you're going up, but what's there? There's the sky, and that is akin to what, I, to us, I think we are the weather. Mm. We, are, we are much more the weather than we think we are. And then you go, right, so what is that? that beautiful thing and you go what is beyond that well what is beyond that sky is it is it, is, it yeah. is, is going beyond that sky has it come back and has it come back through me and up and is that why it comes back into the foreground you know is it a circular well you is can see this sort of elemental churning going yeah, on in yeah. your paintings and yeah. it's something of course that you know you see in Turner don't you yeah well he, I mean I discovered of course that he's one of those great Proponents of the sublime because the sublime yeah. is not a piece of black forest gatto with cream on it. No, it's not. It's something terrifying. It's terrifying. It's That's a mixture of beautiful and then uh, terrifying. And it, it, it makes me laugh. Every you know, there's mm. a shop called Sublime Something. Yeah. You know, like 
handbags or something. Sublime handbags, that, yeah, yeah. I, like, know, I was supposed to be terrified by these handbags. Yeah, well, you open you know? it up, pour it out, and the rain <laughs> pour come pouring out, and <laughs> frogs and death and famine. No, but um, yeah, and, and the romantic movement, the word romance is not about uh, St. Valentine's Day, is it? It's about. No, it's something, it is something elemental it's about and feeling. terrifying and it's, yeah, it's about what over, you feel overwhelming. About yeah, yes. indeed. It's about what you feel about rather than what you see. You see it and it's what you feel about it, not just, oh, let's, that's a nice picture, let's do that. So you're trying to talk about that sort of thing in these paintings or I you're alluding so. to that sort of I, thing? I think so because I... As Otherwise, why would you do them? Yeah, 15,000 pictures, there are only 20 I wanted to hone in on, yeah. 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 So I, I, I wrote, yeah, I suggested that there's something spiritual in the actual. So they're not just vortexes of paint, no. they're pictures of things. You know, so they act, it's an actual landscape, it's an actual seascape, it's an actual tree or whatever. Yeah. And there's some, you're, you're looking for some spiritual aspect of that real world out there, real... I think, yeah, yeah, I think it is. I mean, it's very difficult to talk about because it's an unformed, as unformed as the notion of God. You know, I mean, you know, I've read this book called The Cloud of Unknowing, you know, which is about reaching up, about how do you, how do you, how has the world been so influenced by something that nobody knows what it is? You know, I mean, so there's that element, but also there's the, you know, we've only got the, we judge ourselves as material. We are, the sky is material, the, the, you know, I mean, but then when you find out, when, when, when you read that William Blake said one of the most fantastic things I've ever heard, he said, God is the imagination. I mean, that mm. is amazing. Yeah. And that, I, I read that one, and, I, and that was exactly the same time that Professor Brian Cox said on the, um, one of his programs that, he said that every human being and everything on earth has at least one cell in it that was present at the Big Bang. Amazing. That is a fact. Everything. Yeah. Us. We've all got a bit of us that was present at the Big Bang. Yeah. Or everybody? I'm afraid so. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Some people I can't imagine. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I mean, that, you know, I mean, that obviously, I, you can't paint that. <laughs> you, know I mean? you could, but, you know, um, you could try. I wanted yeah. to mention some particular paintings, uh, if you want to, if they've got stories attached to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, well, I've talked interesting. a couple of three. I mean, I don't know how much time we've got. I don't know how we're doing for time, because it's just, what, how are we doing? I don't know, when I start rabbiting we on, could. I lose it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm quite interested in these trees. You know, there's, there's, there's this painting called Naked Yearning. That um, one. Which is that yeah, one. Yeah, And so you've got this denuded tree, you know, sort of spiky, surrealistic tree. Mm. And I find those quite interesting um, images in, your, in, these la in these landscapes. They're kind of, well, I mean, obviously alive, but they're yeah. kind of... I do love, you know. I do love a naked tree. Yeah. I do, I really love them because I, I also <coughs> like um, pollarded trees. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. because yeah. they, um, often naked trees have this mixture of embarrassment and like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, look at me, I'm a naked tree. You've seen me in my dress. You've seen me all looking lovely with leaves on. This is what I'm like, look. This is what I'm like. So are you under all your frocks you just bought and blah, blah, blah. Look at you. You're all like this. You're all a skeleton. You're all a, <laughs> just a thing like this. And also, the thing about a tree, it's twice as big underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've always loved trees because I've always, I can't remember whether I've seen, is it the paintings and those illustrations of vein, our veins? Yes. You know, when yeah. you see them in Victorian uh, medical books of the, of the vein system. And it's remarkable how they look like, and underneath, how with a, they look like the tree and a root of a tree. Well, they look like a lung, don't they? A lung, yeah. inside yeah. a lung, in that, all that. Or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they do, they are. And this is to me as well, you know, I mean, I think the other spiritual side is that I think, you know, the sky and the weather and the material is us, and the, but we also are not just the material, we aren't just meat. We are, you know, it's, when it's a bad day, that's why we all feel a bit shitty. When the sun comes up, we feel better. You know, I mean, like Turner, you know, I looked at Turner's work and that, that 
imagine what it was like, how smoggy it was in, mm. in, in, um, in Maiden Lane. And when he, at the time he first went to Margate, when he was a little boy, and saw a sunrise and a sunset without any smog, it obviously freaked him out. Well, you he got must have gone, it's in there. And that, that, he did that when he was 12, and that's in his work. And it's in there from that point onwards. You know? Well, you have some correspondence, don't you? Because you've got a relationship with Margate as well. I have, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is independent of Turner, but... Yeah, my yeah. mum, my so mum, when my mum moved down and when she retired, um, she, I, she got a flat um, and it, it, it turned out, I didn't know, and I was going there visiting her a lot and looking at this right on the harbour, not that view, but very close to it. So, yeah, that. And it looked out onto the harbour and it turned out, no problem, no problem. It turned out, it turned out that that, her flat was almost exactly the same place that that Sophia Booth's boarding house was. Sophia Booth was on the end of that, the statue was on the end of really? that. It's exactly where her, that, where, where Turner fell in love with her in that boarding house. Yeah. Gosh. No. Mm. And then there's the, the other, the, the unusual painting really, is the other mum painting, isn't it? Yeah. The butterfly, which I think is a really nice story associated with that picture. That so. one, yeah, that's called, if I remember, my mum, Sylvia, Briefly reincarnated as a butterfly, looking like she's on a bombing raid over London in the Second World War on a Second World War photograph of a bombing raid on a church windowsill. Uh, now, I live very close to St Bartholomew's Church. I don't know if you know it. It's the oldest church in London in Smithfield. And I go in there a lot, meditate. And I went in there, and in the nave... I walked in and I thought, oh, someone's left a piece of litter there. Um, that's a bit shabby, especially when I'm about to pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I, I thought, oh, shit, no, that's, that's, a, that's a, a dead moth. And I picked it up very, very carefully like that. So it was all. And I walked over, looked over, and there was an eternal candle burning, and I put it next to it on the, on the windowsill. And then I went back and I meditated for about half an hour. And I went back to the candle and I looked at it and it had come alive. And its wings were like that, wide, wide like that. I thought, shit, this is a resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> I've resurrected something. And I took a top shot of it, bang, like that. And I looked at the photograph and my mum had died two weeks before. Yeah, yeah. And I looked at the eyes, you know, the eye, you know, a, I said, that's my mum. That's my mum telling me she's all right. Saying, you know, because I was still dealing with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, so then, that's why that's called that. And then when I started to paint this thing under... It looked all like the, the, those aerial photographs. Yeah, yeah the yeah. wax, all the wax on the, um, on, the mat, on the windowsill. As I started to dig, in and a, it, this vortex, it, started, it became a landscape, like a skyscape. Yeah. And then it started to look like those, you know those aerial photographs of bombing raids where, they, where the reconnaissance planes went out and they took, paint, they took pictures. And sometimes you see them amazing black and white shots. It looked like that. And I talked to my mum and my nan and my, and my dad, because she was in the Blitz in the Second World War, you know, um, in Wycliffe Road, where we were brought up. I feel like I was in the Blitz, and that's why that one, Blitz Stream. Oh, well, we were going to, I was going to mention that one, the yeah. Blitz Stream, because that's you. Yeah, because I feel like I was in the Blitz. I mean, I, I was born in 1957. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 feel, I feel like I, ended, I was able to do Lord Haw Haw impersonations <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, because I talked to them about my, you know, everybody talks about the war, oh, that generation. Course, yeah. It's the biggest adventure, horror yeah. story ever, ever experienced. Yeah. And that, when I, when I started to render that painting, uh, where I live, went into the firework display, it echoes all around them buildings. And I thought, Jesus, what must it have been like here in the Blitz? When, well, that's Smithfield, one night, isn't it? Yeah, that's Smithfield. One yeah. night, uh, the Luftwaffe destroyed the entire, well, right up from the St Paul's, right up to um, north of Clerkenwell, didn't they? Yeah. they blew, where the barbican is, they obliterated it. Blew my house up. Blew your house up, yeah. Yeah. Blew a few houses up, you know, and um, so when I finished that, I thought, shit, that's, 
that's another homage to my childhood, in a sense, about a history I don't have. You know. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the point is that these paintings, they're, they're very, it's very personal. It's All not, of them, yeah. It's not, I saw that and I liked it. It's kind of, I saw that and I made it into something that relates... I could not, there's me. none of them, I could, none of the images I've used that were models that either are remained similar, I'd never, I didn't, I couldn't go into them without having a feeling about them, without having a sense of I've got to do that. There's a compulsion mm -hmm. about having to try and render that. There's hundreds of them that I just went, no, 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 that's beautiful, no, 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 beautiful, lovely, no, shit, no, no, no. <laughs> that, that's it, that's it. That, that is an interesting image but it's mystifying me as to why. So there's a lot of narrative here. There's a lot of stories mm. here, isn't there? Yeah, so this, yeah. I think this relates to you know, your other career. It's like, it has way, to be, it has it? to be. Yeah, I mean, know, I've done that most of my life. You know? I mean, 64, I've been an actor yeah. since I was you know, 20. You know, so I've done that more than I've been a real person, really. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you good at pretending <laughs> to be a real person? But yeah, you know, no, I mean, uh, the, the other thing was, when I did, I didn't get into character. This is actually really being it's me. It's you. Yeah, 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 this is really being but me. But that's quite yeah. a relief, isn't it, sometimes? It is a relief, and it's a relief, and it's also a bloody lesson about the loneliness of actually, you know, I've always thought it's a pretty vile sport, but I love it. It's boxing is the purest sport, because it's not a team, it's not a collaboration. Yeah. It's uh, remarkably skilled, but it's one man against another. I think boxing, painting, is an artistic kind of boxing because and also there's a lot of stabbing oh, yeah. and a lot of that. So it's kind of that relationship. It's, it's primeval. I remember the first that. art expressions were somebody with a stick painting a bleeding horse wasn't yeah. it, in a cave. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know, he's still struggling with some of the same issues, really. Yeah, he I probably think. just thumped somebody with a big <laughs> stick and painted a horse. The same <laughs> stick. <laughs> um, Dominic, how are we doing for time? We, yeah, because yeah. I think I just wanted to. Uh, we're going to open up for questions, but um, I just wanted to ask you what you're doing next, because obviously you've got big questions. acting stuff yeah, yeah, coming up, day job, or going. Yeah. yeah, but you've also this is a, a you know a, a body of work. What do you do after this? Because I, I find that. You know, you, you, you work in sort of sequences. Yeah. And you work through something and you exhaust it, or you're sick to death of it, and you think you've done the best yeah. you can with it. Um, and there's so a, a sort of natural point here where you, you're thinking about new, new product. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do feel to a certain degree I've reached a bit of a plateau. You've got to finish a certain thing. Is it the difficult second album Definitely. thing, isn't it? I you think. Know? What's interesting, that painting there, which is called Rootless Landing, that's oh, yes, the very yeah. last one I did. Yeah. And I struggled like hell. That has been through so many de <laughs> derivations that I just couldn't make it work. I shouldn't really tell you where, it's, that, where it is, actually, because it's not anything to do with it now. But that started out as a best Benidorm, um, <laughs> where I did a film. And I couldn't, a very weird picture of Benidorm. It's not, not so, it wasn't. Yeah, it's not it, many people's idea of Benidorm. No, really, no, really. no. Uh, but anybody who knows, they'd know that little jut sticking out there. I couldn't make it work. I just couldn't make it work. And, you know, I had to, there's something happened in my personal life um, that I, I, and I set myself, I had to finish it. Had to finish it before this happened. It was an operation that was going on, some thing that was a yeah. thing, and I had to deal with that. And so that, that painting, although all to a larger or lesser degree, there's a point, I don't know if you feel that, where the painting starts to dictate to you. Yeah. That. Yeah. If you're I, lucky. Yeah. Well, that happened with that. And I, fin and I couldn't, and I finished the sky, and I thought, shit, I think, I, that, I think that, I might have, that's, I can't. And that sky then said, I want something horrible. I want something weird. I want something to come out, I want to then the sky, so I'm gonna suck something out of the sea. So then I thought, shit, and then I love. I remember seeing dead trees, I think it was in South America or somewhere, where yeah. you'd see a whole dead tree with no roots on it on a beach, where it's come up and said, hello, I'm dead. <laughs> you know, and, um, uh, and that was what I decided to put there. And it's like, 
you know, the sea's very calm, but it's almost like the sky becomes the sea. And then that thing comes out and it's come up to sea. I, I'm, I'm darkness and I'm come to sea, you know. It's, yeah. it's, so it's abstract. And I think that, that being the last painting is actually more the way I might go, which is more free form, allow my, because I stuck to a certain discipline yeah. as far as form is concerned. And funny enough, that ended up being quite a composed painting, but it didn't feel like it once I'd messed about with it because it told me what to do. You know, so I think that God knows whether I can do it, but I'm going to go and I'm going to go a bit bigger, I think, just to try. I might not work. I don't know. I mean, I am thinking, shit, what next? But well, that's I, I fully intend to, to keep on. You know. Well, of course. I mean, I, but I, you know, you, you have know, to build it, on it, this, but sometimes you get this hiatus and you're yeah, I don't, thrashing I mean, around. I haven't done anything about it. I've yeah. got one on the canvas, on the easel that I've been, I keep going up looking at it. And, and then going back down and just I've poking it a bit, see if it's still alive. Little bit messing about, messing yeah. it out, and then uh, yeah. and then. Um, but I've got ideas. I've got I've got evil ideas for it, and I'm going to go with it. I think. Um, but I, I'm thinking about actually maybe getting a studio so I can uh, get some. So you did stuff. all this without a studio. This was just yeah. This is all up. House, I've got this it? funny little room up in my um, up in my uh, in my flat, which is. Uh, up a spiral staircase and that's the largest canvas I could get up there I had to measure it and I could get it up of an inch and getting it back down again was a bit of a you know so um, I can't get anything else up there so um, uh, you're gonna have to expand then I think so yeah yeah I think well, that's so. a good sign I think so but it, I, I, you've been doing you've been acting artists haven't you and I'm thinking yeah are we gonna see one of the following. Well, I've got, I mean, Bacon. I do love, ba he's been done. So Spencer. Derek, so Derek was here, he did yeah, it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spencer, Spen I love Spencer. Spencer. I could do, I'm thin enough to play him now. Um, <laughs> couldn't have played you got him. a pram? You I got, a pram, yeah, and I love Cookham because I went there on my boat quite a lot. Um, uh, Blake. Blake. I think. I think it's Blake, is it? Or Hogarth? I, I think Blake. Yeah, because, because of this, this, um, he was a, not only was he a brilliant artist, but he was a great poet. He was also a brilliant thinker. He was able to argue with Newton, disagreed with Newton, was able to call Newton out, you know, and yeah. was, a, was a, 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 a brilliant theologian. You know, there's a lot to take on. I mean, Turner was a nut. I mean, once you found out that Turner not only could paint like that and could paint like anybody, he also had a very brilliant working uh, knowledge of Greek and Roman architecture. And he knew all about um, Roman and Greek mythology. Yeah. You know, he knew it, you know. So, well, you the know, polymath. But, yeah, and, you know, and I think the, and Blake, of course, you know, I lived in, you know, South East London for a long time. Anybody who s lies in, on Peckham Rye and sees angels in the trees <laughs> is all right by me. <laughs> well, I think that's fantastic. I think we should open it to questions. Yeah. Because we've been going quite a while, haven't we? Uh, and do, uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention, but it's someone asked him about Battersea. Oh, there's a lady from Battersea here. Yeah, we've already talked about that. Yeah, I think living by it. Yeah. I was just going to say, do you think some of the things that you explore through your painting are similar to some of the things that you explore through your acting? For instance, the mystery of life and fear and the impending death. Sometimes when you're acting, it, perhaps it's less overt. I mean, even in some of your comedic scenes, like one of the funniest ones I've ever seen from anyone is in life, life is sweet, yeah, yeah. in the cafe. And although that's hilarious, there's the underlying fear of failure and you know, the fear of just being ostracised. Yeah, I've always loved that mixture, you know, when something is, and bathos, you know, where, yeah. where something turns out to be magnificent or sympathetic and then becomes ridiculous. Yeah. I've always liked, I've always loved that, the absurd in the profound, you know, and that, um, and that our, we are, we, we are the kings of our own lives, you know, and that there is drama in the mundane and there is drama in the weirdness of the, you know, and that how, how you know, how important we think we are, how important we are because we are the only human race we know and we are obsessed with 
our meaty physical world, but how absurd that is in comparison to the rest of the planet and the rest of the universe and the minimal amount of time we've been on this earth in, in this cosmos in comparison to its age. But also that's rather lofty, but also all of those contradictions that we have, you know, which I, I suppose is, I love as playing, a, you know, um, you know, uh, in, in, you know the, 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 the extraordinary and the ordinary, really. And that's what I, I find fascinating as an actor. I suppose if it comes out in a painting, I wouldn't be able to comment on that, but it's, it wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't surprise me if it was an, if I had an objective view, but you know, I suppose so, yeah. Good. Someone else? Guy in a grey jacket. Uh, uh, Tom! Uh, <laughs> you know him. Just go back on William Blake for a second. Uh, I'm a student at Camberwell, and it's part of the plans before some studies so with drawing, and I can say from experience, the only thing in Camberwell to really show off what his vision was is Lucas Gardens. And so that's really good. But anyway, I actually did have a question. Um, <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> so, do you find landscape a better mechanism for self-expression over the other forms of painting? Like, so you went to still life in that scene in the Holmes Church, although the walls resemble the landscape. Um, do you sort of do you consider them sort of equal in nature? Well, I'm drawn to landscape and to that because of all the things I've been talking about. But still life um, and the figure is something I shy away a little bit from. Uh, it doesn't really, um, at this moment, it doesn't speak to me. It doesn't intrigue me as much. I find that, um, and also what I do know is I, I know that the human form and the body Everybody is preternaturally wired to recognise it. That's why people, when they see somebody who's deformed, however kind they are about it, they're a little bit freaked out because everybody is born with a, an understanding of a structure of a human face. And you get the slightest bit wrong. So you end up, I, I'm worried about that, that I would end up over-concerning myself at the moment with just that and, and I'd find that kind of a little bit um, of a challenge. I think I will. I have done some figures, um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not drawn to it at the moment because I know that I'm going to have to do some more grunt work, background work, uh, to, to, to learn about the form and the figure, you know, to, to approach it. Because a, fi a face, you look at any Rembrandt portrait, it's a landscape. A face is as, as much a landscape as it is a face, you know. So I don't know. I, I don't know what's coming next. I, the next painting that I'm ignoring up in my easel, I've got these two strange dead people that I'm painting that I might put in. I don't know. I think I might paint the dead before I paint anybody alive. <laughs> you have yeah. got figures in your paintings, actually. They are they're all, all they're, yeah, they're, 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 all, small, they're all kind of me, tiny really. Figures, they, but, yeah, they are there. They are, in fact, me. They, yeah. are, they are me, but um, that is me the, from the back. But... Um, um, yeah, I, 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 I think I will have a go because I think it's, it's foolish, you know, not to, to, igno to, not to ignore it, you know, um, or to be afraid of it. Turner never did it, and he admitted it. You, oh, how many portraits did he do? Well, he yeah. a figure to save his life. Well, that self-portrait's nice, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's really early, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't, but you look at some of those later ones, they're very peculiar. Yeah, yeah. Jessica, that one of, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... It is odd. It I is quite like it. Because we, we saw some of his life drawings from when he was about 14, didn't we? And they were fantastic. Beautiful. So I, don't know, yeah, I just yeah. think he wasn't interested. Well, in what I got life. to know, I didn't think he liked looking at people particularly. He certainly didn't want to engage with human beings. He, I don't think he wanted to sit there and having to talk to them. I just didn't think he was interested in them, really. Louise. Well, I, what yeah. I didn't ask him, I, what I wanted to ask him was how much Battersea is in the pictures? Well, I mean, I grew up, I suppose, you know, you know that, that thing of living, I mean, I live very close to um, Garton's Glucose, Price's Candle Factory, 
yeah. Uh, uh, Gilby's Gin. I live near a place which is in Battersea. He was renowned for having the Battersea stink. And there was this gorgeous stretch of the river there, you know, that Turner said on that Chelsea side looks a little bit like Venice, I think, yeah. didn't it, or somewhere. You know, so you've got this mixture of this, and there, like a, a constant big lump of brilliant mm. architecture, odd, strange, was Battersea Power Station. Mm. So there, I, and that curve of the river there, you know, I mean, uh, so I think all that, this mixture, I've always loved kind of broken down industry and the darkness of that mm. with the sky behind it. I well, think, I, I think you, those ingredients are there right from the beginning, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Got, where you grew up, you've got yeah. the dark river, the yeah. industrial river, dirty yeah. river, yeah. everything's dark, grimy, covered in soot. Yeah. Uh, the river's going yeah. somewhere. Moving. You know, it's going yeah, to take yeah. you out somewhere more interesting, perhaps. And yeah. then you've got this sort of surreal building, Battersea Power Station, which is yeah, a bizarre yeah. building. Which, which is remarkable, which my art teacher, I remember saying, uh, what do you think of that? And she said, um, it looks like a big Art Deco cow upside down <laughs> on its back. <laughs> yeah. And you never look at it next time, it does actually. It's so like strange with white stockings without shoes on. 